Hello and welcome to the Feeder Series podcast. I'm your host, Jim Kimberley, and today we are welcoming back one of our more popular guests from previous episodes who last joined us in 2022 alongside the latest F2 champion, Taylor Porcher, someone he now shares an academy with. But since that time, he's jumped from being a vice champion F3 driver to a seasoned F2 racer, grabbing four podiums and a top tip. 10, easy for me to say, top 10 championship finish in his rookie season. I'm delighted to say we have Zane Maloney back with us. And what's better than having the boy from Barbados on the show and speaking to the boy from Barbados in Barbados? I understand that you are back home. Welcome back. And uh, how is it being, being, being at home, Zane? Yeah, thanks for having me on again. Um, I mean, it's lovely being back home. The view behind me uh, is nice and warm. So I could get back for four days. So when I can get back, I I always make sure to come back and enjoy it as well as I can. Yeah, you look as happy as can be. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you're happy racing as well. But how how has it been home? How often do you get home? Because uh, there's not a lot of racing from the Formula One support series in the Caribbean these days. I mean, Miami's kind of close, but it's not exactly the same. But how how often are you there? Like, sell it to us. I know a lot of people would love to go. Yeah, well, not too much, unfortunately. I'm very busy with everything I'm doing, but um, I mean, Barbados, I'll never live anywhere else other than Barbados. So three or four times a year when I get a chance to come back, it's the option to come back or have a bit of jet lag or stay over in Europe. I make sure to <laughs> to deal with the jet lag and come back for a few days, um, re-energize myself, and it's just always 30 degrees. So if I want a bit of a tan as well, I get myself back to Barbados. <laughs> So, so such a good place to be, I'm sure. I spoke to your countryman, uh, Kiffin Simpson, a few years ago, and he was telling me that there's just so many activities to do out there because you know, that you're raising the profile of racing. But you must be able to do so many other sports um, outside of motor racing when you're there. Do you have time for that or is it a bit more lie down on the beach? Um, well, of course, when I come back, I'm still training hard. So I'm training hard in the gym. And then always there's there's something to do, even on the weekday. Uh, my friends going and playing football together, 11 aside football, uh, stuff like that. Is, it's just always something happening in Barbados. So I'm always out with my friends playing football, getting some fitness in, going to the beach in the morning for a run. Whatever it is, it's just it's nice to be in the warm. So I enjoy every sport, anything I do really in Barbados. If uh, people aren't watching and listening instead, we've got Zane here in a T-shirt outside with the wind blowing behind him. So you can kind of paint the picture. I never owned a sweater. I never owned a sweater (laughs) until I went to Europe. (laughs) Welcome to the UK, mate, with your your Carl and Rodin and everything connections. And I want to talk about that, obviously, because 2024 is a new look all over for you. You've gone from Red Bull, now Sauber. Gone is Carlin, now is Rodin. It's not completely changed but different academy different names different overalls different livery and quite a striking one you can't miss you on the track what's the what's the change like for you yes yeah, it's, it's going great for me i mean the with rodin uh it's all the same engineers mechanics so i mean i feel at home with them um i've never been so close to engineers and mechanics before so i mean in that sense it's it's going very good um i'm working with everyone since last year so two years now and i knew them a few years before that as well so we're all really connected um and in terms of uh, sauber and the stake f1 team i mean it's a an amazing opportunity of course bright green so you can't miss me like you said on the track um but so far it's going great i mean i'm getting a lot of support from them uh learning a lot as as i go along and i mean this is the year that i kind of need to perform of course you need to perform every year but this is a, a very critical year in my career so i'm making sure to put everything into it well the academy got a champion last year obviously in, in teo and now you could have jumped ship in a way i'd call it like from red bull uh to sauber or stake as you are correctly pointing out what's the it's Austria, it's Switzerland, and this. Sort of thing. Are you able to go to to the, to the facilities much? Is it, is it quite a difference in terms of the academy setup? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I mean, I will be going uh, to Switzerland this year at least a few times. I I think um, so far. I mean, I'm just focused on F2. I think it's it's easy to get caught up in in the F1 environment and you're with the F1 team and stuff. But 
I'm focused on F2 because that is my job, let's say, to, to do a good job in F2. And then the F1 stuff is kind of coming afterwards, hopefully, if I do a good job. So, um, so far, of course, I'm with Andretti as well in Formula E. So I've been doing a lot of stuff with them at all the races with them as well, which I'm learning a lot. And then the F2 stuff um, with Rodin, just trying my best to hit the ground running at the start of the season and um, seeing what we can do. And then we move on to other stuff after. Yeah, you are quite busy for a uh, 20 now, 20 year old lad, just with everything yeah. going on every weekend. So I think it's very different sort of weekends from what I was like when I was that age, but I don't think those are the <laughs> stories I should tell the podcast. But last year, I was fortunate enough to say hello to you in the paddock in, in Spain, it was. And you remember you telling me that, and Enzo told me as well, that it always seemed to be one of you doing well. You were very happy because Enzo had a good weekend that weekend. We always seemed to be that. Enzo does well or Zane does well and you ended up more or less around the same point in the championship how do you reflect on that 2023 season because it was quite a roller coaster of ups and downs yeah for sure I mean of course it wasn't where I wanted to finish um the year I mean you look back at certain years in your career and you really think that you did everything that you could have um last year in terms of hard work and how committed I was I did everything I could but in terms of understanding certain things for the F2 championship itself um i probably didn't do the best job that i could have so i mean it's so easy in an f2 car to look like an idiot let's say or look amazing um i mean do you get the tires in the right window you look amazing you don't get them in the right window you're driving a car that doesn't have as much grip because of your fault obviously but there's physically not as much grip so i mean just understanding the tires and and how they work on a quality lap was the main thing i i didn't really get the most out of them on a quality lap uh, in general for probably three quarters of the year. So that was the main problem. But I mean, the last two rounds in, in F2 last year and preseason testing this year, of course, I feel I have a miles better understanding of everything I need to do. And, um, and so far, I've been performing a lot better recently in the last three or four months. So, yeah, just continuing to work on how to get those Pirelli tires to work. <laughs> yeah, everyone underestimates how much the tires which is the only point any part of the car that hits the track how much yeah. difference they make i was actually talking to some drivers who are racing in f1 academy this this year but in form of the winter series and they're saying they've got the hankook tires and then they've got these pirelli tires and the difference like they, they get better the hankooks as time goes on with the pirellis you have that single lap that was really yeah. really powerful how, how much of an adaption has that been for you going through the ranks um, yeah, for sure, it's a it's a big uh, adapting process. I mean, I did British F4, which is on Hankooks, and you could just push for the whole race. You're getting quicker when the fuel loads coming down. Um, and then obviously, I went to Formula Regional, which were Pirellis, but even that is it's quite different. I mean, Formula Regional to F3 to F2, how to get the tires in the window and how they perform is is very different. And Formula Regional, I got up to speeds with it quite quickly. I understood the tires. Also in F3, I think that's what I was best at, understanding what the Pirellis need on a quality lap. Uh, we were always in the top three in qualifying in, in F3. Um, but in F2, it's it's quite different as well. Again, it's, uh, it's a mental kind of block where in F3, you're strolling around and you do the lap anyways. You need to keep the tires. You need to put no stress through them before the quality lap, whereas F2 is very different, but you need to put the stress in the tires correctly before the lap. So... I think that's the biggest thing um i mean it is hard as a rookie in f2 the rookies that do very well are the ones that just understood it a little bit quicker um mm. but i guess it's, it's the same thing in anything in life just being able to understand everything that needs to be done and then the end result will come well you've got i'm looking at 26 more races of experience for that uh, for your upcoming season but the difference of course is and we're, talk we're talking before the season starts just for, for openness for the audience but the difference now is it's a different car. So it's a step up into the unknown, same tires mostly from, from what I understand with the same compounds, but different car. And there were rumors, which I'm not going to get you to speak to, but rumors about taller and bigger drivers struggling with a certain spacing in the in that car. And then you, not in any uh, detrimental way, but you aren't the tallest of drivers, but bloody hell, are you quick in that car from what we saw in testing how much of a difference are you finding between the 2023 car and this new new chassis? Yeah, well, I mean, 
obviously the the taller drivers i guess are struggling a bit to to fit in the car but i'm the complete opposite and i'm also struggling a bit to fit in the car so <laughs> um in the opposite way i mean there's there's certain things that that you have limitations in the car for um i'd say i'm not 100% comfortable i don't think anyone on the grid to be honest is but mm. we drive we drive as fast as we can with what we have so i think everyone's in the same position and so far the it's it's gone very well in in the testing um i mean it's just testing so i don't really look at anything until qualifying one comes in Bahrain but um for sure we came out the box strong and i mean it's good signs and we'll keep working I'm really looking forward to seeing how it all goes. Um, by the time the podcast might be out, we could already see see how it's going. But the the championship this year, there's uh, I think, irrespective of uh, who wins, and we've seen what happens to the winners the last few years, they haven't made it the step up. But you must think with the changes, in particular a certain driver joining Ferrari, which has turned the driver market into turmoil in Formula One, that there's something really on the line this year for that step up. That must really excite you. You must have thought, I'm in the right place at the right time here. Yeah, for sure. It definitely excites me. I mean, like you said, the F2 champion hasn't been in Formula 1 the next year for the last three or four years, I think, which is a bit of a shame. But, um, I mean, you need to be in the right place at the right time. I think that's any sport, anything in life, really. You need a bit of luck as well. And... um, my my job is just to to do the best job I can on track, and and then F one teams look at you when you do a good job. So until you do that, I mean you you're not one to be talked about. Let's say all the hype before pre before the season and everything it means really means nothing because when you get to the season and and you're not winning races, then it's for for no point. So my my goal and my job is to just do the best job I can through the year. Consistency is key, and uh, of course, you need to be fast. You need to to win races and and be on pole. And I mean, that's what the F1 teams look at. So, yeah, I'm just going to continue working with Rodin and seeing what we can do in the season. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. But I'm going to have to say that's enough idle chit chat from my side because, as long time viewers and listeners will know, the Feeder Series podcast isn't for me; it's for our audience. So, we're going to turn to your questions. Just before we get there, we've had. Plenty of amazing guests on the show, such as Zane before, and we've got many more to come. So if you do like what we do, please make sure to subscribe on YouTube or your podcast player of choice. Drop us a like and leave your comments and thoughts. And for those of you already following us, thank you very much. Uh, I know for a fact that Zane has watched the podcast before he told me, so he's automatically (laughs) my favorite guest. Uh, He's one of the quarter of a million listeners and views that we've had, and we genuinely appreciate all of that support. And uh, Zane, thank you. Means, means the no worries. Me, I'll continue to watch. <laughs> look at that. If, if Zane can do it, why can't you? Get that, get that subscription sorted. So, questions from the audience. We've got a load. We've got a load. You're a popular boy. You're a popular boy from Barbados on Barbados right now. But this first section, I call it the quick fire ones. You answer however you like, but the questions can be quite, or the answers can be quite short to these questions. The first one is from uh, the interesting usernames continue Sting Rat Bob via Discord. Are you, are you the real identity behind my Discord friend called Mal? I've never seen his face. Can you confirm or deny if you are Mal on the Discord server by any chance? Honestly, I uh, I don't. I I had Discord, so I might be, but I don't use it. Anymore, so probably not. <laughs> he might be though. I like that. I could imagine <laughs> <Maybe. Mal. laughs> I've never seen Mal and Maloney in the same room, so I don't know <laughs> if that gives you any extra clarification, Sting Rat Bob. But there's your answer. <laughs> Coldplay McPin McPin fan via Discord. Zane, what is your favorite Coldplay song? Uh, to be honest, I don't listen to music. So um, you don't listen to music. I mean, if no, you say I don't, don't listen, listen to, to Coldplay, that makes sense because people don't listen to certain bands. You don't listen to music. That's ridiculous. No, that, well, that's why I watch the podcast because I find it more <laughs> educational. So uh, no, I, I I don't really listen to music to be honest. I watch podcasts. Before I go to bed every single night, I'm trying to, for me, music, for some people, music helps and it gives them a good mindset and stuff. But for me, watching a podcast or listening to a podcast is what gives me uh, motivation and what education, let's say, because, uh, yeah, I'm always learning from podcasts. So, I mean, if you want to ask about a podcast, George Jenko is is the one that I listen to. (laughs) And any other ones which are the best? Uh, Of course, F1 Feeder Series. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. Heard it here first, guys. Um, 
Okay, we'll move on from the, the music hating Zane Maloney here. Music hating <laughs> Maloney. Le Voices on La Parole via Discord. Which F1 driver, and they don't mention present, past, or anything like that, so take from it how you want. Which F1 driver is your biggest source of inspiration? For sure, uh, Lewis Hamilton. I mean, from the time he went into F1 in 2007, I was four years old and I was already watching, just watching F1 for him to watch him. So, I mean, uh, through my entire career, he's the one that I've looked up to, let's say. And uh, he came to Barbados twice in 2016 and 2017. Uh, I drove against him in in a go-kart. So, I mean, yeah, it was a dream come true. And for my entire life and and I always will look up to Lewis he's always the person that that I will see as the best ever in Formula 1 uh for many reasons um but yeah in my opinion he's he's the best and he always will be you might have spoken about this and I've missed it but how did that race go was it a race or was it just a few hot laps how did uh, Maloney versus Hamilton end up it was actually quite cool I mean just to show the guy that that Lewis actually is he was meant to he came down to Barbados and he was at Barbados Festival of Speed um, and we were all go-karting I was go-karting back then it was like 20 or 30 of us and he was meant to wave the the green flag and the checkered flag for the race uh, and when he came he said no I, I want to jump in a cart with them so we found him a cart quickly uh, and then he just drove around with us during the race and and then jumped out and did the checkered flag as well so he wasn't meant to drive with us but of course he wanted to and as a racing driver he he came out and of course uh, he was miles quicker than everyone but at that stage, I was probably five or six years old and couldn't believe that this guy's on the track with me. So now you just want the rematch to show what you're made of, right? With a few years more experience. Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> uh, make it happen, everybody. You know, you've got Val Valtteri in the in your ranks now. You can make something like that happen. That'll be fun. Yeah. Um, let's go on to this one from YouTube user Vishred. And thanks for your support, Vishred. I do see those comments. It really means a lot. They want to know, any new tattoos since the last time you were on the show? Now, you were last on the show at the end of the 2022 season, and that's the F2 season, so you'd been finished for a few months. I don't know how what tattoo situation was like then, but any over the last year or so? Yeah, so I mean, I had the two tattoos before in 2021, I got them, I think. And I got another one, uh, you can't see it properly, in 2023, last year. I mean, it's just... Everything's Barbados re- related. Let's say uh, there's the racetrack, Bushy Park, uh, oh, nice. on me. Coordinates of Barbados. Yeah, I can post a photo on Instagram if you guys like. But yeah, I'm into tattoos, but I never have enough time to get home, get the tattoo, let it heal, go back driving. I never have enough time, so <laughs> that's the problem. I think I think if uh, I can impact a F2 driver's Instagram feed or something, then yeah, or social stuff, please do that. That'd be amazing. <laughs> although it's although it's for feeder series, that'd, uh, that'd be great. But very interesting. Yeah. I like I like the theme, a the theme of tattoos. Uh, that's, that's very cool. Thank you. We've got two questions which are slightly related. So I'm going to ask them together, both of them from Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it today. Quell. What do you like to do in your free time between race weekends? And then Vicky, Vicky Velecki, uh, the username, what's your favorite off-track activity to do? So it's kind of the same question, but maybe you can interpret off-track as things to do when you're not on track on a race weekend. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I'm in Barbados, it's always football. is the, the first thing that I like to play. Uh, but when I'm not in Barbados, I mean, I just try to, keep going to the gym when I'm even if I'm sore after the race weekend keep going to the gym because I mean I don't like the cold weather so when I'm just in the cold weather in my in my hotel room just sitting down I I mean I don't feel the most motivated in life so I try to get outside and and do something I mean also the team when the team are going from a race to another race there's not much time to go and do simulator work and stuff so I just try to stay in the gym but I'd say football is is my uh, second favorite sport let's say you get a lot of time to do football in the paddock. I know the, there's a lot of debriefs sitting around, waiting around. What can you do to pass the time? A podcast clearly is one of your, your favorites. Yeah. I mean, we sometimes, uh, where there is paddle, we always, as drivers, we go play paddle before the weekend. I mean, I go with with Enzo, Richard, Roman, uh, Ollie, Jack. Everyone goes to play paddle a lot, so... Uh, that's the main thing that we go and do. Uh, it's quite competitive there as well, but uh, so it's quite fun. Um, but once the weekend starts, I mean, everyone's kind of doing their own thing and 
Yeah, we don't really do too much. Have you played Paddle for a long time? I've had this on two recent recordings of the podcast, of three, that Paddle has come up as the the sport. And I've put my thoughts out there that I don't remember five years ago everybody talking about Paddle, but recently it seems to be the sport that all the racing drivers do. Yeah, well, I think that when we... Well, it was 2022, we went to Bahrain, and there's just Paddle paddle courts everywhere um so everyone was like what's this we went and played and it was actually really fun so then we now when we go to i don't know like netherlands or something we're looking for a paddle court we're we're searching everywhere for one so i mean it started in bahrain when there's just everywhere and now we're actually going out of our way to to search for them <laughs> so if you have a, a sport that you want to promote make sure that you get it in bahrain around the circuit because all the racing drivers f1 and below will be doing it well, fascinating sure. insight i had no idea that was the origin of it all but there we go there we go um, maybe it was from before one... but i from my experience it was bahrain oh that's no i i believe it because i don't remember it being the the biggest thing all the racing yeah. drivers did before but yeah there we go i'm uh I feel enlightened now. We've got this one from uh, Racing for a Girl via Instagram. A uh, long time listener. Thank you for your support. They want to know, what is your favorite moment of your career? And what is your favorite color? Hmm. Favorite moment of my career? Um, I mean, I wish I could say something from F2, but probably not. <laughs> um, I'd probably say winning Formula Regional in Monaco um, was quite a big thing. Because, of course, coming from Barbados, um, you never race in Monaco, far less win in Monaco. So when I won in Monaco, it was a, almost like a, a holiday in Barbados the next day, which was really cool. <laughs> and uh, it was everywhere. I mean, the national anthem, it was during COVID as well. So there were not many fans, but the national anthem was blaring around the entire streets. You could hear it. So for, for those two minutes, Barbados was the most famous thing in Monaco, which was, uh, was really cool. I love the national pride. And to have to ask, uh, especially for your helmet, which looks absolutely amazing for this year, what is your favourite colour was the second part of that question. I wonder if uh, Barbados might have a little impact on that answer. Yeah, I mean, blue blue is, let's say, Barbados. I mean, the sea is blue, the sky is always blue. So probably blue is my favourite colour. Uh, I mean, I know I'm green this year, but the helmet is still, the core is still blue, which is cool. Yeah, fluorescent green isn't so natural a colour, but you can't can't miss you on the racetrack at least. No, it's cool. Um, and yeah, I do really echo those sort of. I mean, I love the helmet, the reveal. It was just some Thanks. helmets just spark up a little bit more than others, and yours is amazing for this year. Thank Let's you. go on to this one from Eric Marrero on Twitter. How much time did you spend in Miami growing up, if any at all? No, I never spent time in Miami. I mean, I did a few races in the US somewhere in at Homestead um, three or four times I, I love the US I mean whenever we used to go on family holidays let's say uh, if it wasn't just in Barbados on a holiday we were always going to go to the US um, I mean I love it in Miami Fort Lauderdale so just in general I think the US is the most live and vibrant place in the world uh, mm. but I never lived I never lived there I've always lived in Barbados well, there you go, answers this, and we're still in the quick fire questions. I know it's taken a long time, but you've got a lot of questions. And the final one, no, almost final one, uh, Masha Swinkles, great name. How annoying is it? And maybe it's not, I don't know. How annoying is it that people keep calling you the boy from Barbados? It's a catchy name, but is it annoying? No, not at all. I love it. <laughs> I mean, it, I guess it could be a bit cringy, but uh, who cares? I mean, I'm having fun with it. It's it's cool. It's something different. Um, I know my name. Everyone knows my name. So why not call me something else? That's that's quite cool. I, I, I like it. And it used to be the Zane train and stuff like that in carding, which that was funny as well. But I guess that's a little bit more cringy. So the boy from Barreros now is, is one that can stick. And I mean, it's it's a bit different. You know who I am when you say the boy from Barreros. So I like it. It's like a superhero alias. Peter Parker and Spider-Man, Tony Stark, Iron Man, and Zane Maloney, and the boy from yeah. Barbados. I mean, you have, that helmet again. you have to have some fun in life. You need something to, to laugh about and enjoy. I think it's great. Oh, it's, it's such a, it's so, it's so iconic. So no, keep, keep it up. Uh, and then these two are the final ones. And again, they're somewhat related. This one's from Jess, uh, who's got the brilliant username Leem Lawson. Um, favorite track you race at and the favorite that you don't race at. 
and then ale bracket cyber mechanic also via twitter what is your favorite track to race at so two people asking what your favorite track is and then jess also wanting to know which track that you don't race at i'm gonna say you can't use bushy park because that'll be the one that you will I was about to go to <laughs> yeah i know you i know you man you have to plug it um no, i'd say that monaco is is my favorite track um i mean i've been to so many different tracks now with f2 um baku Jeddah, they're all really nice but monaco is just a bit different for me i mean there's a lot of technique a lot of bravery it's all co combined into a street circuit so i i love it in monaco uh, and a track that we don't race at i was gonna say barbados bushy park um but i can't Represent. say that so yeah probably zamvort i mean we raced there last year we're not racing there this year uh and zamvort is probably my second favorite track in the world so Oh, wow! Uh, just all the all the elevation change and there you have is quite brave as well. You need to be brave as well. So um, Monaco for sure. They're very two very different tracks, but I mean I love Zamvor. I've I've always gone well at Zamvor, and yeah, it's a it's a big shame that we're not going there. Yeah, the uh, the season's somewhat changed, but from your answers there, you seem to be a fan of the street circuit. So there are some cracking. Um... A cracking calendar for street for circuit enthusiasts, I'd say, this year. But I didn't expect Baku or anything like that to come up. So interesting. I like it. And Monaco, obviously. Let's go yeah. to these ones, which I'd say the detailed questions, which aren't so quick fire as uh, quick fire as feeder series podcasts can be anyway. Nav, via Discord, do you feel any pressure as a main ambassador for an up underrepresented area like Caribbean in top level motorsports? Really butchered the question. Sorry about my hesitations, but... Nav wants to know, is a pressure for being the boy from Barbados, the, the sole person at the top? No, not at all, to be honest. I mean, I, I more see it as an opportunity to make history, let's say, or not history, but to make something happen that's never happened before. Um, that's making history, come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in terms of pressure, no, I don't feel any because no one's done it before. So it's not, I think there's more pressure coming from, I don't want to say a certain country, but somewhere that's had a lot of, F1 champions and stuff because you're living up to someone that's done better. Um, for me, I'm just trying to put Barbados on the map and just trying to be the first one to get into Formula One from Barbados. So I don't see it as any pressure. Of course, I give myself pressure from many different in many different ways. I mean, I want to perform for myself, for my family, for Barbados. Um, I want to win races. So I have a lot of pressure, but from myself, not really from anything outside. And uh, in the end, I'm doing it for myself the main the main reason so the only person that can give myself pressure is myself really i love that man i really like that good on you uh this one is perfect for what we were talking about a few questions ago enendo flonzo via discord question for zane what is your best experience or memories in bushy park now let's again exclude the hamilton answer because you've brought that one up so anything else that you can big up bushy park for bushy park we should explain is a is a track in barbados yeah, um, I mean, I've done so many things at Bushy Park, so many big things as well. I, I raced against Jensen Button when he was down. Um, Global Rallycross was there when I was, it was my birthday. I skipped school to go and jump in a Global Rallycross car, which was cool again. Um, but I'd say the biggest thing was probably Rally Barbados last year. Uh, the first stage of, of the rally was at Bushy Park. Um, and I, I'd never, I had not driven the car in a year. And I just came back from, I think it was from Barcelona F2 race. I just jumped in the car and, and no one really thought that I would be anywhere. But I, I won the first stage because it's at my home track and I know Bushy Park you backwards. So I jumped in and I was on the limit straight away, which was cool. Lead the rally from the beginning. Um, of course, it didn't go well after that. But yeah, that, that part was amazing. <laughs> I love that. I love that. You just, yeah, you seem as home as can be when you are at home, funnily enough. You can For sure. feel the passion coming out from you. Um, we're going in the same sort of, uh, there are other questions, of course, but same sort of Caribbean and Barbados uh, area of these questions. This one's Gabriel, uh, quote unquote, Gabe via Discord. For Zane, how does it feel to be one of the very few racing drivers to represent the Caribbean? So not just Barbados. We've also seen the likes of Alex Powell do the same with Jamaica, and you're one of your fellow countrymen. Uh, they're driving under the Caymanian flag, Kiffin Simpson. Do you think there could be a surge in Caribbean drivers? Uh, I hope so. I mean, that would be really cool. I think that we, there's now three or four of us um, in racing. There's obviously me, Alex Powell, 
Kiffin, uh, and also Fraser McConnell, who's in Rallycross side of things. Um, so it's motorsport is very big in Barbados, but no one's really tried to go out yet, let's say, uh, to Europe and to actually try to get to Formula One. It's never been an option for, for people, so it's it's great to see that now. And Kiffin, Alex, also Fraser, we uh, he came down to Barbados a year ago and, and drove, and we all grew up together. Uh, I mean, Alex, I was racing from the time, I, obviously I was a few years older than him, but we were racing from the time he was five or six years old. So it's a very close-knit, uh, let's say, family in the Caribbean, uh, and they're all doing a great job. Kiffin's obviously in, in IndyCar, Alex is now moving up to F4, and we just try to help each other in, in every way that we can. So, of course, he's with, he's with Prema, I'm with Rodin, so a little bit different, but anything that Alex needs or Kiffin or... I'm there to help straight away and, and also the same from them. So it's just generally a very close-knit family. So I think if we get more drivers from the Caribbean, for sure it will be a massive thing because we're all helping each other and, and 10 racing drivers is more powerful than one. So I love, do you know what I love the most is you've got this camaraderie with the, the Caribbean racing drivers. That's one thing. But then you also have it again with, with Sauber now. And then you've also got Rodin. And I saw how you were with Enzo. And it, it just seems that there's a lot of support in what could be a very rival, a big, big rivalry between racing drivers. But I'm not getting that at all. I don't know if that's just how things are or if that's the, the, the Caribbean way. But you seem just to be a supportive person, Zane. Yeah, for sure. I mean, of course, I've been brought up like that. So that's why. But also in, in the Caribbean, I mean, I don't want to talk bad about another country and talk good about Barbados or the Caribbean but if you're walking down the street in Barbados and someone who you've never seen in your life before walks past it's actually really rude to just walk past them you, you speak and you say hello good afternoon how are you doing so it's just generally that type of vibe let's say I mean we're we're always polite and and nice to each other I mean Barbados is very laid back and uh yeah be polite to everyone so I think it all just rubs off on us into the motorsport world and I mean, I don't see Alex or Kiffin as my competitors or rivals. I mean, if I wasn't to make it to Formula One and Alex or Kiffin were to make it to Formula One, I'd be very happy for them. So I think it's just a bit of a different mindset. I mean, there's not right or wrong. It's just a different mindset, let's say. I've, uh, I've, I've been fortunate to live on, um, on tropical islands before and island time and island mentality is very, very different. And it's how it yeah. should be, in, in my, my humble opinion. <laughs> Kirken via Discord wants to know Zane, how much impact did your international have on national the national karting scene in Barbados? So I'm guessing you going out there and representing the flag around the world has that changed the national scene? Is there, are there, are there more drivers at Bushy Park and racing around there? Yeah, I'd like to hope so. I mean, I do think it, it has a little bit. Um, there's a lot more children in Barbados that want to be racing drivers because they see how fun what I do is, let's say. Um, so, I mean, my goal is to, of course, get to Formula One, but also kind of come back home and see what which drivers are looking good and which drivers have the potential to, to go into Formula Cars in Europe and, and hopefully Formula One as well. So, I yeah, that's my plan to, to come back and really do those things. But for now, um, there are 20 or 30 carters in Barbados having a, a good time going from work straight to carding. So I think it's more of a fun thing in Barbados, but it would be great to, to make it a, a competitive um, environment, let's say. What I'm hearing is even if the Formula One driving doesn't work out for whatever reason, which could be completely out of your control, there could be Mal Maloney GP or something racing in Formula One as a team in 20 years' time or something. With, uh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that would be exciting. Uh, check out my Discord. To Zane, after the massive crash you had in F3 at Spa in 2022, did you think that you would win the feature race and also best of luck for this season? Firstly, uh, thanks a lot. Um, no, of course I didn't think that I was going to win the next day. I mean, I wasn't concussed, but I felt concussed. Um, I I was bruised everywhere. I had ice on me the, the night time of the crash. So, uh, to be honest, I didn't even know if I was going to drive the next day. We turned up at the track. The yeah. Trident did an amazing job with getting the car ready. They had zero hours sleep. Uh, and I think we were going to the grid at 8.30 in the morning, and at 8 o'clock the engine wasn't starting. So... I mean, I was lucky to make the race, far less win the race. So I was, after that, I knew 
after I made the race just, I knew I have to win it for these guys and, and girls. And um, yeah, it was amazing to win it, of course. Yeah, the, uh, the, kick, the kick start of that final run, which put you that close in the end with the <laughs> three wins on the row, three to each three, brilliant stuff. Um, I'm, love F3. I say all the time, I love F3. That was uh, some exciting stuff. Yeah, uh, let's go into this one, which uh, I'm quite excited to know how much you can say. Uh, because I saw Jack Crawford um, having an interview with Racer and Chris Medland uh, explaining the step away from Red Bull. And question from San via Discord. Question for saying, how did you find out you're going to be a stake F1 junior? So my question on that is also how did you know you're going to be switching from the Red Bull colors to the stake slash Sauber colors? Well, I mean, I, I, I do the on-track driving. Of course, I'm part of discussions and I uh, have my opinions on certain things uh, but I let ADD management deal with my management stuff let's say and, and where I should be I trust in them on where I should be in my career um, at certain points so I kind of let them do their brilliant job with that uh, as long uh, as well as my dad as well um, but I mean Red Bull being with Red Bull last year was great um, I mean they're winning in Formula One and I had a great opportunity I knew that it's a cutthroat sport, but all, especially with Red Bull. And I knew that I had to be amazing in, in the season to, to get anywhere, um, which I, I wasn't. That's the fact. So I, I wasn't unbelievable. I didn't do anything great, let's say. So um, I mean, then when I got the opportunity with Stake F1, I, I know that this is my year to do to do the job. And um, I mean, it's a bit more of a family, let's say. Uh, I'm really, I feel already in, engraved into the family, which is really cool. Um, but I mean, I don't, I see every opportunity as a good opportunity and I had a great time with Red Bull. Of course, it's hard. Of, of course, uh, life is hard. Um, my dad is hard on me if I'm not training. If I don't train one day, he's already shouting at me. He doesn't give me the opportunity to not train two or three days. It's that first day, why are you not training? So my dad is already tough on me um, and my entire family. So I can kind of take it from, from anyone and, I, I kind of see it as constructive criticism. It's, they're not trying to bring you down. They're trying to bring you up. It's just how they do it. But uh, everyone does it differently. So looking forward to, to the season, really. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes, especially with that very unique car. There's, uh, there was a lot of Red Bull colors the last few years. So it's uh, really, yeah. <laughs> very, very helpful to have the, uh, the big bright green one and know who's inside that one. This one's from Tudoro16 via Discord. Hey, Zane. What's your relationship with Enzo Fittipaldi like? <laughs> Enzo. Uh, no, we're really good friends. I mean, we still speak to each other all the time through the paddock. And uh, it's quite funny because Enzo is, a, of course, a great person, a great driver. But he's just hilarious to be around on a day. I mean, you, you can't even explain how he's hilarious to be around. But you're just laughing every all day at it. If it's at him or with him, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> but, uh, you're just laughing all day. So, uh, And then it's quite funny to see Pietro and Enzo because Pietro is not the opposite, but he's a lot more serious. And he, I'd, yeah, Enzo's just the opposite to Pietro. So it's quite funny to see. Um, but no, we, have, we always have good fun together. I will corroborate that because you two just seemed as happy as could be uh, when you were hanging around together. You just... Uh... Yeah, you can tell when some drivers get on and you yeah. guys clearly, clearly got on. We've got this one from Discord as well, from Matt Tucson, hashtag bring back Renault. Hi, Zane. And lovely little story, this. I was at, as in Matt Tucson was at, I was at Brands Hatch in the Paddock Hill stand when you won the British F4 title and sat very close to where your family were and they went crazy when you won the title. How much of a support would you say your family have been in your career? Yeah, a massive support. I mean, I saw the videos from when I won British F4 and your eardrums must have been hurting because they were going quite <laughs> crazy. So uh, they've always gone crazy. I mean, we went to Wales for my first race and you could only hear them um, if I was in first or second uh, or third. Uh, so it's it's cool to see. I mean, even if they come to a weekend that doesn't go well, uh, they just can't hold in their excitement, let's say. Um, but they do have high expectations for me. I mean, my family expect me to be a, a winner in, in many ways. 
um, because they all are winners. They they do a great job in their businesses and and different things. So I have to live up to something big, let's say. Uh, but they're yeah very supportive in, in a hard but nice way. Um, always motivating me to to go to higher heights, let's say. And um, yeah, they it's a very close family, so we're we're always getting advice from each other. High standards, high expectations, but high rewards when it all works out. For sure. I imagine. This one is a bit tongue in cheek, I believe, from Josh via Discord. To Zane, how was the EFO test that you did before F2 testing? Now, I'm going to just caveat this that there's testing, which you can't do in the F2 car, but you also can spend further time doing testing. And then we saw this news come out about uh, a certain Mercedes junior driver going seconds faster than everybody else in another test, which wasn't official, but. How much, I guess my question, apart from what one, how did it go? How useful is testing when it's not in the same car? Um, I mean, I only did two days of testing this year. Uh, so, of course, it's very useful. But to some extent, I mean, I had a year in the F2 car. So when you drive something completely different, it's good. It's very good. But so close to F2 testing is not the best thing. Um, I mean... I just try to stay in a car as much as I possibly can. Of course, it's very expensive, so I've not been able to to do that as much as I wanted to. Um, but you just try to stay in a car as much as possible. And I mean, the test went good. Uh, we kind of, you do your own thing. I mean, I, I had my engineer there and we were kind of doing our own thing. The others were doing their own thing. Um, and again, I, I know that a lot of drivers, including myself, are hyped for certain reasons and and there's a lot of talk going on before the season about certain things. Zane's going to do amazing. Zane's not going to do amazing. It means nothing until we actually get on track. So um, I kind of try to stay away from, from everything, do my job. Um, and in the Euro Formula test, the test that I did, I mean, I did my job of what I was trying to learn with, with my engineer, which was great. And again, in the F2 testing, did what I can to, to learn as much as possible. And, uh, and then we go for the season and see. The one question we got from Futures Talent F1 uh, ties somewhat back to that, but we all know, as they say, we all know that Kimi Antonelli will be surrounded by the media as he is, in their opinion, overhyped for a kid with that much talent this year. Do you fear him for the title in F2? Now, I will protect a little bit, and uh, thank you, Futures Talent, for putting me in this awkward position, but the Kimi Antonelli hype is huge. Like the, I don't know if it's necessarily just because he's done that step up, because of his, his wins on the way up and because of Lewis moving on. How much time have you been able to spend with him at the, the testing? I know it's uh, clearly not the same team or anything, but have you were you aware of the progression that he's had the last few seasons? Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, of course, he, of course he's hyped. The guy's won everything he's done. So you're always going to be hyped. He's amazing. He's He's done everything he needed to do up until now to to win the championships that he's won. So, um, I like I said, I don't really get into the hype, overhype, underhype. I mean, the results is what talks. And until now, he's won everything that he's ever raced it in. So, um, I see him as another competitor, just like how I see anyone on the grid. Uh, I think that when you jump in F2, it's, it is different because the car is, is very different to anything you ever drive. And the tires, like I said, are, are very different as well. So... It'll be interesting to see how, how he gets along in F2, but so far he's just showed that he's a very good driver, and so I'm sure he will do a very good job. And if he does do a very good job, then he deserves to be in F1 more than any of us. So mm. I just see it as everyone's just trying to do the job that they can. Um, social media is, is a very good thing, but I try not to look at it because it's also uh, can carry you away mentally from what your actual goal is, and that's driving a car as fast as you can on a racetrack. Um, so I've kind of come back to that, and that's my goal. I'm sure that's his goal. I'm sure that's everyone on the grid's goal. Um, but I think that 99.9% .9 of F2 drivers this year are great drivers, and or 100% are great drivers, and it's whoever gets the tires right gets the car in the window which team gets the car the best will win the championship and and they'll deserve to win the championship so that's how i see it i mean yeah all the talk is just is just talk until the results come i'm going to say uh, this is my personal opinion not feed to serious anything like this but there've been drivers which have 
not necessarily deserved to be in F2 uh, for quite the last half decade or so. But this season is is almost entirely just pure talent. The drivers that have made the step up, the drivers which are returning. It's one of the most competitive F2 and F3 as well grids that I can remember for a long, long time. I remember something on the line. Whoa, you were. It's going to be fun to watch. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, I will talk too much. So I'll progress onto the next question from Tunes via Discord. They want to know what is your driving style like? Um, I mean, you can't really get a point that I can say that is my driving style, but. When in slippery conditions, usually I'm I'm always quick. So I would like to say quite aggressive. Um, I mean, I used to struggle with too much front end in the car when I was earlier in my career. But I then, when I realized I was struggling whenever I had too much front end and, and I had oversteer, I would just, in all the testing, just put oversteer in the car to, to be able to be fast with it. And now I would say I'm quicker with an oversteer car than an understeer car, and I like it more. So... I'd say I'm quite aggressive. Um, I think everyone has a different driving style, so it's for the engineer to understand and how to set the car up based on the driver. But, I mean, I just try to get in anything I can and, and drive to how the car needs to be driven. So, yeah, I'd, like, I'd say quite aggressive, um, but always adapting depending on, on the balance of the car, really. An aggressive, adaptive driver. That makes sense. The one that I've got here is from Merlin Block 8627 via YouTube. And I'm guessing they're a, a bit of a Maloney fan. So they've got, I have some questions, they say. And I've got, I think eight is what I counted. So I'm not going to go with all of them because that might take a bit too long. But let's go with two. Pick two numbers between one and eight. And then we'll, we'll see what comes out. Uh, two and two. 22. 22. Got to, there's, only, there's only eight questions. I can't do two and two twice. Come on, Zane. Oh, okay, sorry, my bad. That was, really stupid. <laughs> that was actually quite stupid for my side. Uh, I don't know, two and five. Two and five. Okay. How was your winter break, they want to know, uh, for question two? It was great. I mean, it was only three weeks. Um, so I still feel like I'm in the 2023 season. Uh, but I, I recharged enough and I'm ready to, to get going for the season. So it, it was great in Barbados, of course. And will you drive an F1 car this year? I'm not too sure, to be honest. Um, like I said, I'm focused on F2. I let ADD management deal with that, which they do a great job. Um, so I guess I'll hear the news when, when you guys hear the news about what's happening in general this season, other than Formula 2. I'm not going to put you on the spot because maybe you know, maybe you don't, and maybe it's ADD that manage it. But the F mandatory FP1 sessions must give you some sign of hope, though, especially being affiliated with a, with an academy. We saw Teo do a bunch of these FP1s before, and I don't really know who else would be likely to jump in for that. So you must be fingers crossed for an FP1 session. Yeah, for sure. I mean, my dream is to drive in Formula 1. So an FP1 is already driving in a Formula 1 session, which would be, would be amazing. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to hopefully getting something uh, in a Formula One car in the next year, two years, three years. At some point in my life, that would be great. Uh, but I'm just focused on F2 for now and and doing a great job there. I can only imagine how loud your family will be in whatever grandstand that would be. <laughs> for sure. Shout. Yeah, put put them in the put them in the in the Mexican grandstand yeah, baseball stadium. There we go, good there. Then... Yeah. <laughs> that would be perfect. That would work well. Yeah. Uh, they also wanted to add, add at the end of this, good luck for the season. Uh, take the trophy. So I'm pretty sure a big fan. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Andy underscore zero, also by YouTube. What are the biggest differences between the new and old F2 cars? Um, there are differences. I mean, from a driver's standpoint, the, it feels quite similar. There's only small small things. From an engineering standpoint, the aero is different. The downforce levels are a bit different. And where you need to run the car to get the most amount of downforce versus drag is quite different as well. So uh, as a setup, we are running different things as, as teams. Um, it looks different, of course. Uh, but but in general, the, the tires are the same. That's what's touching the track. The brakes are the same. That's what stops the car. And the engine's the same, which is what carries the car forward. So from the the basic stuff, it all feels the same. It's just the minor stuff that uh, feel a bit different in different ways, really, but all towards the same thing. I think we won't be much faster. We won't be much quicker. 
uh, we won't be much slower uh, this year than the old one. Uh, hopefully the racing is just as good. We'll uh, we'll find out pretty soon. Yeah. And then we've got Elemental Sheep 2672 by YouTube. I really want Zane to make it to F1. If the dream doesn't happen, what series will he go to after F2? Formula E, WEC, IndyCar. Now, you are PR, so you'll say F1 is a dream and if you're not thinking about this, I'm going to ban that. We're going to pretend that F1 is taken out, that F1 stops. They've had enough. Liberty Media say no more F1. We've got Formula E, WEC, IndyCar as some of these examples. Is there anything else you'd want to do with any of those which is uh, the priority? Um, I mean, yeah, if Formula 1's out, then... It's between IndyCar and Formula E. I think they're very different things. Um, but I, so far, what I've seen in Formula E, I, I love it. I love it there, really. Um, the drivers are amazing. The teams are amazing. And it's also a lot to do during a race. Uh, it's like F1 when it comes to what the driver and engineers need to do during the race. Of course, IndyCar is amazing as well. It's, I'd say, close to Formula 2, probably, in terms of how you need to drive and what you need to do to be fast. So I'd love it there. And to be honest, I mean, I don't know when it's too late to go into rallying, but I, I also mm. love rallying. So um, even if I was to make it to Formula One, I for sure would want to do some rallying at some point. Oh, I find that amazing. Uh, I I don't watch enough of it, but anytime I see like a YouTube suggestion of watching these rally highlights, it's just crazy. sensational. It, yeah, yeah, crazy is exa the exact right word. Yeah. But let's try and get through these final ones because we might be able to get through every question here, but. Uh, Cococ, I think it is. Uh, like monocoque, but Cococ. Uh, what is the weirdest or funniest thing you've ever shouted into your team radio during a race? Uh, I think you'd have to, you'd have to, yeah, good question. You'd have to ask my engineer because I mean, I'm usually quite <laughs> level headed. Um, like if I, if I got caught cursing on the radio, I would get a phone call from my dad straight away. <laughs> Um, so I've actually, I honestly have never cursed on a radio on a race weekend. So I'm quite proud of that actually. Um, no, usually I just, I scream it without pressing the radio button. We don't need to hear all that. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone next to me uh, can probably hear it driving next to me, but not the, not on the radio. <laughs> All I'm hearing at the moment is I want Daddy Maloney to adopt Yuki Sonoda so he can shout at <laughs> him all the time for the swearing. Yeah. Uh, Milagros, Milagros8188 by Instagram. What do you think about the rookies we have this season? And like I say, it's a, a good step up in talent. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a lot of talent this season. Uh, every season, there's, there's a lot. But for sure, this season's going to be tough. I mean... Um, I don't even know, to be honest. I can't even remember who's rookies versus not. I think it's, there's a lot of good rookies, a lot of good second-year drivers, a lot of good third-year drivers. Um, in general, it's going to be a stacked grid, and uh, there will be certain ones that shine to the top, like always. Uh, but generally, getting a reverse grid for some people, a reverse grid, top top 10 qualifying will be difficult, for sure. So I think it's, it's a, a season that is going to be very exciting for everyone watching at home. Any thoughts about rookie incoming, but with a very different um, route to F2 with your teammate? Yeah, uh, of course. I don't even see Rotomo again. I don't see Rotomo as a rookie because he's he's done a lot in Super Formula and he's a very good driver. So, um, yeah, I mean, Rotomo's a very good driver. Kimi, um, and there's loads down the grid that, that could do a very good job. So... It's whoever can get the tires. Through them here. You've, got, you've got Zach, you've got Gabriel Bortoletto, wow. Yeah. Franco Colapinto, uh, Rafael Gomez, who else? Pepe Martis made the step up, Joshua Dirksen, Taylor Barnard. It's decent. decent yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good drivers this year. I mean, last year, I think it was seven. Paul Aaron top... as well. Sorry, missed you, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> the top seven, I think, from F3 last year went to F2. And I think it's even the same or top eight or something have moved up to F2, uh, which is really cool to see. And yeah, for sure, it'll be a, a very tough season for everyone. But um, it's going to be exciting for sure. Yeah, I really feel you could have the person finishing in P18 still be one of the top drivers. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a really deep grid. Nate the Great uh, on Twitter wants to know, and sorry to bring it up, how did it feel to come from behind and narrowly miss out on the F3 title? If the race was restarted, you would have been the champion. Good luck next season, by the way. Firstly, thanks a lot. Um, I mean, it was tough to take. I think during, in the moment, I was just happy to win the race. I, I, I kind of, halfway this, through the season, I kind of 
the F3 title wasn't even a thing anymore. It was like, what, what's that? That's done already. Um, so then to be able to be so close was a, for sure, initially was a, a, a happy feeling. And then when I look back at the season and I saw Imola and missing the Weybridge in Barcelona, um, crashing again in Silverstone, um, I mean, I lost 70 or 80 points just from not so smart things from my side. So that was quite annoying. Um, but I, I quickly moved on and it hasn't changed anything for my career. Of course, when I look back in 20 years, it would have been great to have an F3 title on my mm. CV. But um, I know the job that I did and I think everyone saw the job that I did at, or at the potential I had. Um, so that was the main thing, really. Yeah, I'm looking back at it now. You're right. It was essentially two weeks that changed your complete outlook with having not been in the championship fight to being yeah. right in the championship fight. It's fascinating. Right, let's get these last ones done and we can actually get all the questions. Marcus Malfoy, what, and this is by Twitter, uh, what was it like to race with Jensen Button in karting? You did mention it earlier. Yeah, it was great. Um, I mean, Jensen was, was such a nice guy and he, he also taught me things about fitness and because he's a triathlete and I really learned a lot from him. Um, and I drove in a go-kart against him and also in an F4 and he was in a radical. So that was also really cool. Um, I mean, I looked up, I looked up to these guys for Jensen. He was Lewis's teammate. So I kind of got that connection there being a big fan of Lewis, also Jensen. Um, so it was a great opportunity. And I mean, I'd like to do something again with him soon. Um, I see he follows me on Instagram. I follow him. So, yeah, we need to, to get something going again. So I just need to become a seven-time or a, a world champion in F1. I'll get the Zane Maloney follow, and I'll, uh, I'll have that sort of pride for me. <laughs> this one, Fantasy Booker podcast. Uh, probably another podcast you listen to, Zane. Not a feeder series quality, of course, but Fantasy Booker podcast. WWE Master 2018 by Twitter. Two questions for Zane. How was winning the FIA Rookie of the Year Award in 2022, and how was winning the F4 British Championship in 2019? Yeah, so the Rookie of the Year, I mean, I I got the call to say that I was the Rookie of the Year, and my family were, like, so proud and really very excited. And to be honest, in that moment, I didn't really know to what extent the Rookie of the Year is. I was thinking initially, oh, um, F3 Rookie of the Year was, like, I thought I was the highest rookie anyways like what's the point and then I realized that it's motorsport rookie of the year um so that was amazing and I mean that's a once in a lifetime opportunity I think there's only a few that have won it more than once so I'm very grateful for that um and of course to be recognized for the job that I did that season was was also a great feeling and then to win the British F4 championship again was was amazing it was the first real championship that I had won in my life that was a big championship and first year in a single seater so again that was kind of a shock to the system um through the season I was kind of just driving not for fun but not really knowing what I'm doing or what's at stake uh and then to win the championship w was a great feeling with all my family um there at Brands Hatch as well cheering me on which was really cool yeah, I love that story. And that's one of my favorite anecdotes from the podcast. We've got this one to round it out. And I suspect I know what the answer is already, but Austin via Twitter wants to know, are you and Rotomo excited to go 1-2 this year in the driver standings in F2? Yeah, very excited. <laughs> no, of course, we'll see. I mean, that that's the goal. Of course, I would like to be first. I'd like him to be second. He'd like to be first and me second, but we'll see. Um, I think the, the important thing is that we just work together well, and so far we, we have been, um, and I'm sure that the team will do a great job, and if we work well together and, and help each other move forward, um, then I'm sure we'll do a great job as well. So looking forward to it. Oh, me too, me too. I'm going to say thank you, Zane. Again, you've been, I'm, I'm glad we've had all this time to, to chat. Just this one-on-one, -on -one, you, you, your answers are tremendous. So thank you so much for coming on and best of luck for the season. Best of luck with everything that goes forwards, wherever the season or beyond takes you. I'm going to say that's all the time we have with Zane Maloney. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. And if you're watching on YouTube again, dropping a like on the video, leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel like Zane does all really <laughs> helps us out. And if you are listening, leaving a review on the podcast platform you're listening on is greatly appreciated. Finally, check out feederseries.net for more feeder series insight and follow feeder underscore series and FS Americas on X. 
and feeder series net on instagram if you're a world champion zane maloney will follow you back as well you can find all the links to those plus where to find everyone else in the in this episode myself and zane in the youtube description or the podcast show notes until next time we have been the feeder series podcast goodbye <laughs>